Uh, good morning. Uh, today's topic for the uh, presentation lecture is uh, basic fluoroscopic imaging and basic radiation safety. Um, uh, we will start by a description of um, components of the fluoroscopic imaging chain, uh, going through the components of X-ray tubes, and then we focus on the uh, uh, radiation safety. Uh, f to remind what the X-rays are, uh, the X-rays are um, uh, electromagnetic waves that coexist in duality with photons, so basically energy coexisting with the matter. And they fall in a wide range of the wavelength between 0.1 nanometer and uh, 10 nanometers, uh, which is right above the uh, gamma um, electromagnetic wavelength. Uh, there are two X-rays that can be uh, uh, considered, the uh, soft ones and the hard ones. The hard ones are of the uh, higher frequency and the soft ones are the lower frequency. The soft ones are primarily used for the X-ray and fluoroscopic imaging. Uh, the function of the fluoroscope is actually to give you an image uh, that a uh, live image of the tissue and, um, and provide guidance for your fluoroscopic guided images um, procedures. X-rays uh, have been used for a very long time since um, uh, Wilhelm Rentgen introduction and then slowly um, went into from the, in the beginning, they were used as a X-ray uh, for diagnostic purposes, and then were utilized for the fluoroscopic imaging. The first idea was to position the the X-ray tube and between the, the X-ray film between the patient and the physician. And uh, in the beginning, they used darkened rooms uh, because they didn't have any uh, ability to use monitors or cameras. Uh, the monitors and cameras they started to use around the 1950s, and this is when uh, the, uh, gen the new generations of the fluoroscopic uh, devices were put on the market. And the most common one we use is a C arm, which is standing right here. Uh, it basically uh, follows the same ideas of the imaging, the fluoroscopic imaging chain. Um, it starts from the X-ray generator that basically uh, you can utilize for the um, regulation of the strength of the X-rays by manipulating with the kilovolts or milliamperes. And then the next uh, component is the X-ray tube which generates the electrical X-ray, okay, followed by um, a collimator and a filter. Um, the filter comes on the top of the X-ray tube and uh, between the X-ray tube and the filter you have a table with the, with the patient positioned on it. The next uh, part is the image intensifier. Uh, right beneath the image intensifier is a grid Above is the image intensifier followed by optical coupling, video camera, and a monitor. Um, each component has its own function. Um, as I mentioned before, the X-ray generator is used to basically um, generate the electrical power and that is being conveyed into X-ray tube, and the X-ray tube generates actual X-ray beam. The X-ray tube has uh, primarily three components, the X-ray cathode, uh, the glass um, tube, which is usually filled with uh, cooling material, it's usually oil, and anode. Um, the cathode is being warmed up, and as, as it's being warmed up, it releases electrons. The electrons enter the space in the glass tube and are uh, being um, speed up and they hit the anode and as they lose the kinetic energy 
that energy is being utilized to create X-ray waveform. Now, the process um, produces a lot of heat. Okay, so in order to control the heat, the frequently the end will spin around in oil, so that reduces the the heat and the X-ray can be utilized for longer time. Right above the the X-ray tube, you have a um, a filter, and as the uh, X-ray beam is being produced, it, it, it exits the X-ray tube and goes sort of dispersed in a d different directions. The, the role for the filter is to uh, attenuate the uh, straight, weak radiation around the actual beam of the X-ray that is used for the uh, production of the image fluoroscopy. Then um, the, the beam enters the image intensifier right at the area of the uh, beam intensifier you have a grid and the 